Hey, what's up? The Cabinet Vision Guy here to talk to you about a very important topic, file management. Now, on the surface, this may seem like a very boring subject, and I'm not going to lie to you, it really is. But it's also very important for ensuring that Cabinet Vision will work to its maximum capacity. Now, why is this so important, though? While Cabinet Vision is a well-made application that will do many different things, there are limitations that can come from the computer itself, like processor speed, memory size and speed, and many other things that can be bottlenecks for the software. Proper file management will help us to cut down on autosave speed and general organization on the back end of things. When it comes to file management, we can do several things. The first would be to store all of my rooms in a single job. This can be the most cumbersome one, and I don't personally recommend doing this. Not that you can't, but I just wouldn't. The next thing we can do is split the job into multiple files. Every time we need to make a new room, we make a new job. This is a much better option, in my opinion, as should something ever go wrong with the file, I lose a single room and the updates made for that room, not the entire job. Another thing we can do is have uh, separate drawings from the job. This will help to segregate our drawing files and our engineering files so the Cabinet Vision doesn't have to work so hard on loading and saving. This option can be done whenever we make one big file for all the jobs or all the rooms, or if we split the rooms up. Now the final thing I want to talk about, which really isn't an option and should be done by everyone regardless, is backups. I can't stress enough how important this is. There is absolutely nothing that you can do to make sure that your work is safeguarded more than backing up the information. Let's take a look at how I can accomplish some of these things. Creating a separate job for each room is pretty trivial, so I'm not really going to go over that. What I will go over, however, is how to separate out the drawing files. This can be done by changing a certain setting in Cabinet Vision. Let me open up the application menu so that you can see it. Next, we just have to click on the Preferences button. Then I just need to go to the General tab, and you can see the Save Drawing Scenes in Separate File option. Now this can be really important as drawing scenes that are made can make up the bulk of a file size. If I check this property here, at the splash screen, all of my new jobs are going to use this. This is why I leave it unchecked, personally. If I'm creating a tiny little job that isn't going to have a whole lot of detail or drawings, then I can risk leaving the drawing files there. Of course, if the job is more complex, requiring, uh, requiring many drawings and details, then I will just, while I'm inside the job, check this box and then save the file, which will split everything up. Let's get into a job that I made so you can see this. This is my kitchen job. It's just something that I threw together and wouldn't really pass out to the shop to have them make it. It's only really for this specific podcast. So we can look at the drawings and see that I have a couple of drawings here. Once again, if I go to the preferences for this job, we can see that I have the save drawing scenes in separate files option checked. Let's open another job that I made that is very similar to this. Again, this is a job that's just for this podcast. So uh, let's see, we can see that we have some drawings here. And uh, now if I close out this job and take a look at my file system, I can go to the C drive, then the planet folder, and then the solid underscore eight underscore zero folder, then the jobs folder, and then my sample job folder. Now, while there are a whole lot of files, you can see that the job files for those two jobs are relatively small. If we go to a job folder where I have those two jobs combined into a single file, as well as all the drawing files in it, you can see that the job is uh, actually a little larger. The downside to doing this is, well, there's a whole lot of files to have to worry about. Also, should any of the drawing files get deleted or moved, Cabinet Vision will have some problems loading. Since I have the Explorer open, we can quickly cover backing up files. Now you might think that it can be difficult to back up your files, but it really isn't. Your backups can be as simple as copying and pasting the file somewhere. To do that, you can just right click on the file and select copy. When you get to the location that you want to save the backup to, you just right click and select paste. To shorten the process, we can even do a right click drag and tell the system to copy to the location where you release your mouse over. What about those split jobs with all of those drawing files though? Adding a small step can ensure that all the files stay together. We just go back to the folder that has the separate files so I can show this to you. First we select all the files, then right click, hover over send to, and select compressed zipped folder. 
Now we can back up this file, this compressed file, the same way we did with all the other files. Finally, we're going to want to give our backup files a name that lets us know when we back the files up. I like to use this kind of format. The file's name, a dot, the year that the backup was made, a dot, the month that the backup was made, a dot, and finally, the day that it was made. Now why such a complex way of naming? For starters, this gives me a unique name for each backup, which allows me to store them all in the same folder. This also allows me to sort the backups by file name so that I can easily find the most recent one. While we're on the subject of organization and management, let me go over what I consider to be an underused utility that is provided by Vero, the catalog editor. Let me go ahead and get it opened up right, uh, here right quick. Uh, if you haven't noticed, I've upgraded to Windows 8. Let me tell you, I'm actually loving it. Anyways, here we are in the catalog editor. This app allows me to create, edit, and copy catalogs, as well as manipulate the objects within. Haven't you ever thought to yourself, you know, dang, I wish I could play around with a cabinet without having to open a new job or without placing a wall. Well, this is how you do that. So first, let me go ahead and explain the interface a little bit here. The sidebar contains information about the selected catalog. It's grayed out right now because I don't have a catalog selected. So. Some of the information is for the catalog designer. It doesn't typically show up in cabinet vision, unless you're making a modular catalog for distribution, of course. But that's not what we're doing here, so let's just go over a little bit of this. The internal name is the name of the catalog as you need it to be. So let's say this was a catalog that I gave out. If I needed it to give a different name for my users than I want to see, I would set that name here. Next, we have the version. This isn't something I can actually set, and it just lets us know what version of Cabinet Vision the catalog is for. FYI, this doesn't match the Cabinet, ver cabinet Vision version. Wow, that, try saying that five times fast. Cabinet Vision version, Cabinet Vision version, Cabinet version... Yeah, okay, that's a bit of a tongue twister. <laughs> uh, next is the description. This is how you would like the catalog to be described, I guess. I'm not really sure. The type lets you set the type of catalog that this is. I know that really wasn't helpful, but I'm not exactly sure what this means yet, but uh, I will definitely let you know once I do. Um, and now we get to modular. This is a great little switch. If I select this, then Cabinet Vision will first look for all of the construction, material, and, well, everything else from this catalog. If it can't find that, then it will look to the room or job properties. A handy little thing if you want to make a catalog that no one can mess around with. Uh, hide list lets us hide the list price for an object from Cabinet Vision's bid center. And hide cut list will hide the cut list from Cabinet Vision. And, oh, now this section is cool, the doors. We can specify a special door catalog if we want here. The uh, Cabinet Vision will look to the file that's in the same directory as this catalog, typically the database folder. Now this is set to doors.ddb by default and can be changed to any other door catalog that we want to use. This uh, option, Mix Styles, allows us to specify that we want to allow the user to have a different upper door than the base doors. If this is set to No, then the uppers have to uh, use the same door style as the base cabinet. And then we have the final section here. This lets us define the default values for cabinet dimensions. The only thing that I really want to go over here is the Two Pull option. Here we can define the minimum drawer front width that must be reached before an additional pull is automatically added by Cabinet Vision. Next, we have the Explorer tab. This works like the Windows Explorer in such that we can select catalogs, expand them out, and browse around the contents of each catalog. All that will show up here is the catalog and any menus that we have made. This is also where I would make new menus. For instance, if I just right click and select New Menu, it will prompt me to enter a menu name, and I can enter the name of the menu, and then select the icon that I want to use for that menu, and click OK. Let's make a menu named Sample Menu. See? That was pretty easy. On top of making menus, we can also make new assemblies. If I right-click on a folder, I can select New Assembly, and the New Cabinet dialog appears. My nomenclature would be the name of the cabinet as I want it to appear in the catalog and cabinet vision. The class is the general class of the cabinet. You can see here there are base, upper, tall, and more classes to choose from. This will let Cabinet Vision know how to place the object on layers, as well as certain basic information about the cabinet. The type is a more refined informative for Cabinet Vision. Standard cabinets get different hinging than something like a corner, for instance, so we can specify that information here. 
Next, we have the construction style. This lets us choose a generic construction style that the cabinet will use. Through my testing, this doesn't really affect the actual construction method selected, but that may be because I have Solid Ultimate. If it is different, I will let you know though. Then we have the sizing parameters. This allows us to define the starting size for the, uh, this cabinet object. We can also create a non-graphic accessory in the same manner. We just specify a name, description, and the various pricing and sizing information. In both, you can also see that I have the ability to select the specific icon I want to show for this object as well. Now, we can do all that, but how exactly do we create a new catalog? Well, before we could go to the planet folder, find the version that we are using, and then copy the clean catalog.cvc file. But with the catalog editor, we can actually go to the application menu and click on the new catalog button. You can also see here that we can make new groups or menus, as well as new assemblies. And this will work for the selected catalog in the Explorer. Anyways, when we click new catalog, we can specify the new name and then whether or not we want to hide the cut list and click OK. Let's uh, name this one to My New Catalog. Let's also go ahead and add a new category named My First Category just for the heck of it. Now that we know how this works, let's go over how to build a catalog. First, let's right click on the My First Category and select New Assembly. Let's start by naming this My First Cabinet. We will select the standard type and, uh, well, everything else looks OK. So now we can click OK. Now we have the familiar assembly editor that we usually see in Cabinet Vision. Since this is an empty carcass, let's just do some simple editing here. We'll place a horizontal split to give it a drawer and door, and then we'll make the door a pair door. Next, we will go to the interior section editor and place an adjustable shelf. Great, let's look at it in the 3D viewport real quick. Perfect. Now to just go back to the section viewport so that we can make sure that the properties for this cabinet are all correct. And now we're ready to save this to the catalog. We just press the return button and it will ask us if we want to save the assembly. Yes. Now we get the uh, save object dialog. From here we need to do a couple of things in the advanced section before we go any further. I need to make sure that the class and type are correct, which they are. Then I need to look at the placement. Notice that the stretching group has uh, nothing checked. Well, we're going to leave it that way uh, and for a reason. The vertical placement is telling us that it will be placed above an elevation of zero. I don't like that, so we'll go ahead and change that to floor instead. Next, we look at the preserves. Uh, you can see that there are some door and drawer preserves. Let's uh, go ahead and remove those since this isn't a modular catalog. And now I want to look at the aliases tab. This is one of my favorite tabs. We see that there aren't any aliases yet, so let's go ahead and create a couple. I want to make my first one named B30 since this is a 30 inch wide base cabinet with a uh, standard 34 and a half inch height and a depth of 24 inches. Now I just click OK, and there it is in the list. Uh, let's make a few more going from 32 inches wide to 36 inches wide in two inch increments. Excellent. So now we click OK, and finally, yep, you guessed it, click OK again. And nothing happened. Why? Well, we need to refresh this uh, window here. The easiest way to do that is to just select the catalog, then reselect My First Category menu. And now you see four cabinets. The first one, My First Cabinet, is a fully-fledged cabinet assembly in the library, or catalog. The others, however, are just aliases. And you can tell that by the little asterisks here beside their names. Now let's see how this looks inside of Cabinet Vision. We will just go ahead and open Cabinet Vision here and start a new job. Now let's just draw a long standard wall. And let's find our new catalog and there it is at the bottom there. And go, to, uh, go into my first category. Next we see all the cabinets that we made. Watch the dimension lines as I place the cabinets along the wall. You can see that they are the sizes that we specified in the aliases tab, and we didn't have to do any editing to any of the cabinets in the section editor or in cabinet vision. They just come out the correct size. Now watch what happens when I attempt to edit one of the aliased cabinets. Cabinet vision gives me this error about not being able to resave an alias. 
I can, however, edit the parent assembly as I need, and all alias cabinets will be updated as well. So you can see the power we have available to us with the catalog editor. Of course, this isn't anything we couldn't do uh, inside of Cabinet Vision directly though, so why have the catalog editor? Well, remember I showed you that modular switch? That's what we can't do in Cabinet Vision. Let's move back to the catalog editor and check that out. First, I'm going to go ahead and make a new catalog. I'll call it uh, My First Modular. Then I will select the catalog and click the modular checkbox. Good, now it's a modular catalog. Next, uh, we will make a new menu. I'll call this Cabinets just for now. Now that we have made the new menu, the catalog editor has refreshed, and now the options and door tabs, as well as some new ribbon bar commands, are available to us. The first command that opens up is the price labels, also known as the price categories. This allows you to specify base prices for objects. The more base prices you want to have, the more labels you need. Next we have the simple pricing table. This allows us to specify a price for each item in the catalog. We can also import and export the price tables. Um, for the options, we can specify option categories as well as items in those categories. And finally comes the doors. Here's where we can specify the doors that can be used. Each line represents a style type, which the user can then select, and they will have multiple different door options they can choose from, which would be set by you, of course, using the door associations button here. So I really don't want to go into all of the intricacies and details of making the modular catalog, as there are a whole lot of them. But I will show off a great sample one that has already been provided to you. Let's move back to cabinet vision. Now we just select the generic catalog, and we are prompted to select the options we want to use. Once we select the options for this catalog, we can then click on Next and select our door styles. You can see the plethora of options that we have um, that have been set up in this catalog. Let's just click Finish and grab a cabinet to see what happens. Uh, let's use a um, base cabinet, then look at the three drawers and just grab any one of them and place it on the wall. Now we can see that the cabinet we have, if we go into the cabinet and take a look at it, um, is totally different from the rest of our cabinets that we placed, mainly because it's using the items specified from our options, not our job. Uh, what's the point of this though? Well, let's say you've got cabinet vision working just the way you want. Now you've decided, hey, I don't want to design jobs anymore. I just want to make the cabinets. I've got the machinery, I've got everything else. It's just, it's just too much work for me to do everything. So you can go ahead and make a modular catalog that you can pass out to other cabinet vision users and have them do all the design work and you just make the cabinets they made with your engineering work. Basically, step one, design the catalog. Step two, pass out catalog. Step three, profit. As always, if you have any questions on making a modular catalog or pricing, you can always ask, uh, ask me on my Facebook or Google Plus page and you can also look to Vero's eSupport website to get a lot of your questions answered there. There's a lot of great people who know what they're doing with these things there. I would once again like to thank the Hayfula Company for their continued support, and will finally leave you with yet another great quote from one of my favorite sci-fi authors, Douglas Adams.